A town under siege. Morwell's fire fears spark angry confrontations. They tell us to stay and we can't. Well, I can't, breathe. I can't breathe. Some residents of Morwell South are being told by the state government to leave the area. There are concerns tonight that the Hazelwood fire will take at least another 10 days to be stopped. As Mark O'Brien reports, many locals are becoming frustrated with the situation. Tensions are at boiling point as the fallout from the Hazelwood fire has locals turning on each other. You're an idiot. That. Even go, go, go away. Please, please. Go away, please. You're an idiot. Others fearful and desperate for help. But there is a whole community here that is crying out for help. Some locals unimpressed when Chief Health Officer Dr Rosemary Lester fronted a news conference. I'm 25 years old. Yesterday I spent five minutes in the smoke outside. I could not see for one hour. Dr Lester said some people living in Morwell South should leave until the smoke and ash clears. So those over 65, children under school age, pregnant women, and anyone with a pre-existing heart or lung condition. 1,500 people live in the worst hit area. Authorities stressing it's not an evacuation, but a temporary relocation. Weekly grants ranging up to $1,250 for families are available. I've instructed the Department of Human Services to be compassionate and generous. Police have already brought in more officers to patrol the area to ensure that people feel comfortable, that their houses will be protected. Today the wind kept the smoke out of Morwell, but it was only temporary relief. The bad news is that the fire, the smoke and the ash are going to be here for a while. Well, the best case scenario is another 10 days. And this is what has locals worried. Ash that coats everything within hours of being That's clean. Every day. That's every day. That's pretty good today. Desperate to end the crisis, authorities are seeking advice from those who've battled similar blazes. Craig Lapsley met with the former mine firefighter Bill Brown to discuss the plans. We, we need to just listen to what, uh, what Bill's got to offer. The longer the fire burns, the hotter tempers will get in Morwell. Mark O'Brien, 10 Eyewitness News. Tensions high as Morwell South residents are urged to leave town. Morwell South residents at risk are being told to get out before a wind change drives toxic smoke towards their homes. The sick, elderly and pregnant have been advised to leave until the Hazelwood coal mine fire is extinguished. But that could take weeks. After living with choking smoke for nearly a month, vulnerable Morwell residents are finally being told to get out. Tensions are running high. We can't sleep, we can't go outside, we can't breathe. There's a problem and nothing's being done at all. They tell us to stay and we can't. These men almost coming to blows. Go, go away. Go away, please. The government calls it a recommended relocation, but in fact it's urging a partial evacuation of Morwell South, where 1,500 residents live next to the Hazelwood coal fire. The longer the vulnerable people sp spend in, in the fine particles from the smoke, that that's a continuing risk to them. I have to think about it, yeah. It's horrible, you know, you don't really know what's happening. Those advised to get out are people over 65, families with preschoolers, pregnant women and people with heart or lung conditions. Eligible residents can access means-tested grants of $750 for single people or $1,250 for families each week. This government is leaving no stone unturned to fix the problem. I think they've tried to sweep this under a little bit and, and just push it aside and, you know, try and, try and save the mine a bit more than saving the people. We stand ready uh, to receive a request from Victoria for assistance. The Chief Commissioner has ordered 30 extra police to patrol Morwell South from this afternoon to ensure those who leave that their property will be protected. I think it is important that if people decide to leave their homes that they can see a highly visible police presence and get a sense of security. The Chief Health Officer says Morwell is not seeing an increase in ambulance call-outs or demand on the hospital. But Australia Post has cancelled deliveries to the area until further notice to protect its workers. Brendan Donoghue joins us live now from Morwell. Brendan, why has this decision taken so long? 
Well, Peter, at first the government thought it might be able to quickly put out the fire and avoid any talk of evacuation. But after four weeks of smoke and ash and rising community tension, the government was effectively forced to act today. But there still is conflicting advice. The Chief Health Officer says there's no serious impact from the smoke, but she doesn't know the long-term health implications. So the government today took the halfway option, urging vulnerable people to get out of Morwell South for at least 10 days or until the fire is eventually and hopefully put out. Peter? Thanks, Brenda. Well, residents are urged to relocate. Vulnerable residents living close to the mine fire burning at Morwell have been urged to leave. Emergency chiefs have warned the crisis is likely to last well into next month. Frustration boils over in the town. Andrew Lund with the latest. As smoke continues to billow from the Hazelwood mine and across Morwell, stress is taking its toll on residents. <laughs> We can't go on. This afternoon, Victoria's chief health officer upgraded her advice, urging vulnerable residents living near the mine to leave the area. And we know that continued exposure to the smoke increases the risk of, of uh, bad health outcomes. The advice applies to an area south of the railway line, east of the Streslecki Highway and west of Hazelwood Drive, home to around 1,500 people. Those being told to leave are the elderly and very young children, as well as pregnant women and people with pre-existing heart and lung conditions. I must stress this is precautionary advice only. The air quality has not, not gone up significantly. There is no significant increase in the danger today. The fire has been burning for almost three weeks and after a flare-up on Tuesday is likely to burn well into next month. If everything progresses well, the best case scenario is another 10 days before that fire is to a position that it won't put up significant smoke or ash over Morwell. The Prime Minister offered his support from Canberra. We stand ready uh, to receive a request from Victoria for assistance under the natural disaster arrangements and uh, we will activate our part immediately. Firefighting efforts at the mine continue with anyone entering or leaving the staging area having their carbon monoxide levels checked but many residents say they've been kept in the dark. Come and sleep in this town, come and live in this town and not leave this town and, and, and just see how you go. The Premier defended the government's response as he visited the town this afternoon. I can understand why the people of Morwell are frustrated by the ongoing smoke. I can understand their concern with what's happening in their community. This is a challenging time. The Greens are calling for a full inquiry. We need to know how to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. 30 extra police have been drafted in to keep an eye on homes if families do choose to leave. But today, one of their first jobs was keeping emotions in check. You're an idiot. We're complaining about coal ash. Andrew Lund joins me live from Morwell. Andrew, are residents heeding the advice? Well, Pete, some are, although nobody's being forced to leave. I spoke to a nursing home a short time ago and they say they're preparing to move their 47 residents out at some stage tomorrow. They're just working through the logistics of it all. As you can imagine, it's not an easy job. Um, there are government grants available for people uh, to cover the cost of their relocation. $750 for singles, $1,250 for families. There's also free train and bus travel available for those who need it. Um, anyone who needs more information or advice is being urged to call the DHS on 1-800-00. 468. In the last few minutes, the EPA has put out a high-level smoke alert for the Latrobe Valley for tonight and tomorrow. Uh, although health authorities are at pains to point out that today's advice is just a precaution, although they say they are keeping a very close eye on the situation here. Pete. Right, thanks. Vulnerable residents in Morwell South urged to leave as the Hazelwood mine fire continues to burn. This is not an evacuation. It's advice for it's an advice for temporary relocation until the air quality improves. And growing frustration in Morwell of an advice rather than an evacuation. I would say to those people that the state government has responded to the advice from the experts at each and every occasion. Good evening, Lisa Maximovic with ABC News. 
Vulnerable residents have been urged to leave the Latrobe Valley town of Morwell South amid growing concerns about the health effects of the Hazelwood coal mine fire. The blaze has been burning for three weeks and is likely to continue for at least another 10 days. Those advised to leave town include people over the age of 65, children under school age, pregnant women and anyone with a pre-existing heart or lung condition. Financial assistance will be available to people who need to move. We begin our coverage tonight with Frances Bell. For three weeks, Morwell residents have been choking on plumes of smoke. Now, amid growing community anger, authorities have decided to act. This is not an evacuation. It's advice for it's an advice for temporary relocation until the air quality improves. The advice is targeted at residents in Morwell South, considered most at risk. Those over 65, children under school age, pregnant women, and anyone with a pre-existing heart or lung condition. Eligible residents can apply for relocation grants. I've instructed the Department of Human Services to be compassionate and generous in these circumstances. We stand ready uh, to receive a request from Victoria for assistance under the natural disaster arrangements and uh, we will activate our part immediately. For residents left behind, authorities warn the fire won't be extinguished for at least another 10 days. Next week, the fourth week of the fire, there's two days that bring wind, dry conditions and heat. That worries us. The Chief Medical Officer, the EPA and the Government insist the conditions in Morwell are uncomfortable but not unsafe. But a respiratory expert who's been advising the Health Department says at this point no one can be sure and it's prudent for the most vulnerable to leave now. We're entering an evidence-free zone. We haven't encountered this before. We know that exposure over many years does have irreversible effects. We, we don't know about exposure for weeks. The Premier has defended not advising residents to leave earlier. The decisions we're making as a government certainly are not affected by any indication of cost or liability. The government's promised an investigation into the fire and the response. The Greens and the opposition are calling for an independent inquiry. Francis Bell, ABC News. Many more will residents remain angry about the government's response to the mine fire, saying today's advice comes too late. Cheryl Hall has more. In Morwell, frustrations are boiling over. They've not told us the truth from the start. I don't understand. Why, excuse me, I'll answer one question at a time. Much of the anger is being directed at Victoria's Chief Health Officer, Dr Rosemary Lester. 25 years old and under. Well, I won't answer questions that are shouted at me. All we want is air. We don't even want money or food. Just put us in tent cities. Get the town evacuated. Look around at the people in the street wearing masks every day. Look at what's actually going on. At the end of today's press conference, police had to step in to break up an argument on the footpath. Go, go away. Go away, please. Many people in the South Morwell area were expecting a much stronger announcement today. They say temporary relocation rather than evacuation will make very little difference to the vast majority of residents. What we're concerned about is Rosemary Lester coming on TV and radio saying there are no long-term health effects. Well, how does she know? She's saying this is a short-term thing. Well, how does she know? So how long has this ash been here? Tanika Stratford closed her swimming school two weeks ago because of the toxic ash falling in her pool. I still have bills to pay. I don't have an income. Um, we're not eligible for the relocation money that DHS are offering because I don't have a health care card. South Morwell resident Mike Kitwood has been monitoring air quality in the Latrobe Valley for 30 years. He says he's never experienced these conditions before and has collected his own samples for testing. Uh, mercury, uh, there is arsenic certainly in, in the coal and uh, yeah, hydrocarbons which uh, you know, in long term can, uh, can be uh, uh, cancer causing. The fire burning over Mike Kitwood's back fence is expected to grow next week as conditions get hotter and drier. Cheryl Hall, ABC News, Morwell. The Mayor of La Trobe City, Sharon Gibson, joins us now from Morwell. Sharon, we've just heard from some very frustrated residents in your community. Do you share their anger? I can understand very much 
their anger and their concern very much. This is a, a fire that has gone on for so much longer than anyone ever in their worst nightmare would have thought of. And it's gone on and gone on and people are just frightened of the whole situation. What do you make of the advice they've been given? Look, the advice they've been given, I think we can only trust in the best advice we c we've been given and we leave that up to the experts. But when there's advice, take the advice is what we say. Sharon Gibson, thanks very much for joining us there live from Morwell. Anyone planning to leave Morwell is urged to register in person online at the Red Cross website or by ringing 1800 727 077. Bye. Tonight, Morwell residents hit out as the Hazelwood fire crisis escalates. Renewed concerns about the blaze's long-term health impacts. And how log truck rollovers have been virtually eliminated. Good evening, I'm Britt Ditterich. Also tonight, the first sod turned on an upgrade of the Warrigal Rail Precinct. Emotions have boiled over this afternoon as vulnerable members of the Morwell South community were advised to leave the area. Residents say they've been lied to by authorities about adverse health effects of smoke and ash from the Hazelwood mine fire. Tensions ran high with Morwell residents at breaking point. You're an idiot. Go, go away. Go away, please. You're an idiot. Emotions couldn't be contained. We can't sleep, we can't go outside, we can't breathe, children can't go to school, people can't go to work, you can't continue to allow this to happen. It burns your throat, it, once it turns to mucus it's acid rain. You can't walk outside without it being that smoky that you can taste it in the back of your throat. And Victoria's chief health officer bore the brunt of frustrations. 25 years old and under are still well, at risk. I won't answer questions that are shouted at me. As vulnerable members of Morwell South's community were advised to leave. Those over 65, children under school age, pregnant women, and anyone with a pre-existing heart or lung condition. Authorities say the upgraded advice hasn't been triggered by increases in dangerous levels of toxins in the atmosphere, but due to the length of the event. The next 10 days this will be a going fire that will continue to put up smoke and ash over Morwell. I urge people to follow the advice of the Chief Medical Officer. This is sound medical advice which people should follow. However, there is no compulsion for people to relocate. The advice drew criticism from all political circles. A potential partial evacuation of Morwell. Uh, you know, I think the government have been caught flat-footed on this. I think they've been all too quick to try and talk it up and say everything's fine. The Greens will be asking for a judicial inquiry into what has happened here. An extra 30 police officers have been deployed in Morwell South to patrol areas where there are empty homes. We don't intend to uh, be putting any roadblocks in place in the Morwell South area. Uh, people will be able to move in and out of the area as they please. From today, payments will be made available to eligible residents leaving the Morwell South area on the upgraded advice. I have instructed the Department of Human Services to be compassionate and generous in these circumstances. We want to look after the well-being of the people of Morwell. The Premier and his officers out there saying to the people of Morwell, look, it's perfectly safe, but whatever you do, don't go outside. That makes no sense at all. The people of Morwell have been treated very shabbily. Fire authorities say they're focused on having the fire out within the next two weeks, but admit weather conditions next week could change the situation. The fourth week of the fire, there's two days that bring wind, dry conditions and heat. That worries us. Anita Butterworth, Wind News. Some doctors have voiced fresh fears about the long-term health impact of the smoke haze. They say there's no way to tell where the hazardous chemicals released by the burning coal will spark symptoms among affected people. 
It's a health crisis that's engulfed the Latrobe Valley for nearly three weeks. Everybody has a story about somebody who's been sick or somebody who went to the doctor and had blood tests that show things were in their bloodstream that shouldn't be. It's enough to see Australia Post suspend delivery in parts of Morwell, deciding the smoke is too hazardous for its posties. We know that continued exposure to the smoke increases the risk of, of uh, bad health outcomes. But authorities are still trying to determine exactly what those bad health outcomes are, even looking overseas for evidence. Like all good professionals, you seek advice from a broad pool of advisers and experts. I don't think they can keep deferring saying they're looking for data overseas. It's very clear that the World Health Organisation on air quality that was published in 2005 clearly defines the limits that the people in Morwell are being exposed to are seriously dangerous. Mary Vale doctor Rowena Knusson says people are presenting from Yarragon to Bairnsdale with problems including respiratory tract infections. There are going to be other chemicals such as mercury, selenium, heavy metals with the uncontrolled burn that will have other effects as well that may not even be symptomatic at this stage. It's a point not lost on organisers of a public rally to be held at Kernot Hall on Sunday at two o'clock. If there's going to be a Royal Commission or something like that which we're pushing for then perhaps we need to tell the local people that they need to be collecting data on every visit they go to the doctors, any health issues. Meanwhile hundreds of Morwell school students are being hosted at other schools in the valley. We've been prepared to share. I mean obviously this is, a, this is an exceptional circumstance. But the state opposition says the execution has been flawed. Why are some students being relocated and other students not? Parents deserve that answer. Teachers and principals working in the schools deserve that answer. And, and the kids. Amid the angst, goodwill continues to flow as organisations offer relief from the haze. Old Gippstown is offering free admission to more residents, schools and kindergartens. People can also travel at a heavily discounted price on the Walhalla Goldfields Railway while the Trobe City will run free shuttle buses from Morwell to the Ballara Folk Festival tomorrow. And mail not delivered to Morwell residents can be collected from Australia Post in Bridal Road. Tom Kelly, Win News.